Welcome to Maths Companion. I am Ramesh. In the last video, we have discussed isosceles triangles. Let us recall what we have learned in the last class. If two sides of a triangle are equal, the angles opposite these sides are also equal. If two angles of a triangle are equal, the sides opposite these angles are equal. In any equilateral triangle, all angles are 60 degree. Now let us check the answer of the homework. In the figure below, O is the center of the circle and ABC are points on the circle. What are the angles of triangle ABC? Let us look at the figure at first. Consider triangle AOC. OA and OC are radii of this circle. So they are equal. That means triangle AOC is an isosceles triangle and these two sides are equal. So the angles opposite to them are also equal. That is these two angles are equal. This angle is 120 degree. Then what is the sum of the other two angles? That is 180 minus 120 or 60 degree. And these two angles are equal. So each angle is equal to 30 degree. In the same way, triangle AOB is another isosceles triangle. And these are the equal sides. So the angles opposite to them are also equal. That is these two angles are equal. Since this angle is 120, sum of the other two angles is 60 and since they are equal, each angle is 30 degree. Now we know sum of all these three angles is 360. This is 120, this is 120, so this must be 120. Because 120 plus 120 plus 120 is 360. Now as we have seen earlier, Triangle BOC is another isosceles triangle and these two sides are equal. Therefore, the angles opposite to them are also equal and therefore these two angles are 30 degree each. Now, we are asked to find the angles of triangle ABC. Angle A is 30 plus 30 or 60 degree. In the same way, angle B is also equal to 60 degree and angle C is also equal to 60 degree. We have seen different types of lines. Lines are used to make triangles and rectangles etc. Today, we are going to learn a particular type of line called bisectors. What is a bisector? It is a line which divides another line or an angle into two equal parts. Now let us consider a triangle, triangle ABC. Here AC and BC are equal, means triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Now from this point C, let me draw a perpendicular to AB, let it be CP. We know the triangles APC and BPC are equal and therefore the sides and angles of triangle APC and triangle BPC are same. Therefore AP and BP are equal. That means this line CP divides AB into two equal parts or CP is the bisector of AB. In the same way, these two angles are also equal. That is, this line divides angle C into two equal parts. Therefore, CP is the bisector of angle C also. That means, when we draw a perpendicular from this point to the opposite side, it is the bisector of this angle and the opposite side. What is the speciality of this point? It is the point joining equal sides. So from the point joining equal sides, if we draw a perpendicular 
to the opposite side it is the bisector of the opposite side and the angle at this point so we can say in any isosceles triangle the perpendicular from the point joining equal sides to the opposite side bisects the angle at this point and the side opposite here cp is the bisector of the line ab not only that it is perpendicular to ab so it is called perpendicular bisector of ab now consider this line this is the midpoint of the line a line is drawn through the midpoint so this is a bisector of the blue line because it divides the blue line into two equal parts when it passes through the midpoint this is another bisector because it also passes through the midpoint this is another bisector this is another bisector means you can draw a lot of bisectors for a line all those lines which passes through the midpoint are bisectors of the line this is also a bisector but it is perpendicular to the blue line so it is called the perpendicular bisector of the blue line that means you can draw a lot of bisectors but there is one and only one perpendicular bisector for a line we have seen that the perpendicular from the point c to ab bisects ab and angle at c we can see it in another way the perpendicular bisector of ab passes through the point c or the perpendicular bisector of ab passes through the point joining equal sides let us draw a line ab now let me draw an isosceles triangle with ab as base suppose ac and bc are equal then triangle abc is an isosceles triangle and c is the point joining the two equal sides therefore the perpendicular bisector of ab passes through the point c now let me make another isosceles triangle with the same base ab here abd is an isosceles triangle in which ad and bd are equal now d is the point joining the equal sides therefore the perpendicular bisector of ab passes through the point d now let me draw another isosceles triangle with the same base ab here ae and be are equal therefore abe is an isosceles triangle and e is the point joining equal sides therefore the perpendicular bisector of ab passes through the point e so to get the perpendicular bisector of ab it is enough to join all these points till it reaches ab like this so this is the perpendicular bisector of ab now to draw a line how many points are needed suppose there is a point a how many lines can be drawn through the point a we can draw a lot of lines like this passing through a but when we are given two points l and m like this we can draw one and only one line passing through the two points so when we have drawn only one isosceles triangle we have got only one point through which the perpendicular bisector passes we know the perpendicular bisector of ab passes through the point c but through c we can draw a lot of lines like this among them which is the perpendicular bisector of ab it is difficult to determine therefore we need to draw one more isosceles triangle to get another point through which the perpendicular bisector passes that means to draw the perpendicular bisector of ab we need to draw at least two isosceles 
triangles. Let us see how it is. Let me draw the line AB at first. To draw the perpendicular bisector of AB, I need to draw two isosceles triangles. Let me draw an isosceles triangle at first. How can we draw an isosceles triangle? Take the compass and put at A and draw an arc. Now put the compass at B without changing the radius, draw another arc. Mark the point of intersection, join this point to A and B. So this is an isosceles triangle and this is the point where the two equal lines meet. Therefore, perpendicular bisector of AB passes through this point. Now we have to draw another isosceles triangle with same base AB. We can draw on this side or we can draw on this side. I prefer to draw on this side because already I have drawn an isosceles triangle on this side. If I draw on this side, it will not overlap on this triangle and I can draw it neatly. And you can draw an isosceles triangle of any measure. Only thing is that AB should be the base of that triangle. But I prefer to draw the same isosceles triangle on this side. Because when I draw this triangle, at the same time I can draw triangle on this side also. So I am going to draw the same triangle on this side. For that, I am taking the same radius and putting the compass at A and draw an arc. Now put the compass at B without changing the radius, draw another arc. Mark the point of intersection, join it to A and B. So we got the same isosceles triangle below the line AB. Now we know the perpendicular bisector passes through this point also. So we got two points through which the perpendicular bisector of AB passes. Now it is enough to join these two points to get the perpendicular bisector of AB. Now look at the figure. To draw the perpendicular bisector we need these two points. Do we need these lines or sides of the isosceles triangle? Not necessary. It is enough to mark the points. By drawing these arcs, we get these points. Now let us see how we can draw the perpendicular bisector of a given line easily and correctly using all these principles. Let us draw the line AB at first. Now put the compass at A and take more than half of the length of AB and draw arcs on both sides of AB. Now put the compass at B and without changing the radius, draw arcs on both sides of AB. Why do we take more than half of the length of AB as radius? You can check. Draw a line AB and take less than half or equal to half and draw arcs and observe. Comment me about your findings. Now we have drawn arcs. Mark the point of intersections. Actually we have drawn two isosceles triangles. If you join these two points and these two points, we get an isosceles triangle here. In the same way, if you join A to this point and B to this point, we get another isosceles triangle below the line AB. But we have seen that no need of isosceles triangles, we need only these two points. That is why we are not drawing these lines. Now join these points of intersections we will get the perpendicular bisector of AB. Here CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. We have drawn the perpendicular bisector of a line. Now let us recall the steps once again. 
First step, draw the line AB. Second step, put the compass at the point A and draw arcs on both sides of AB. Third step, put the compass at the point B and without changing the radius, draw arcs on both sides of AB. Fourth step, mark the points of intersection. Fifth step, join the points of intersections to get the perpendicular bisector of AB. Today, we have learned bisectors and how to draw perpendicular bisector. Now, there are two homeworks. First one, draw a line 6.5 cm long and draw its perpendicular bisector. Second question, draw a square each side 3.75 cm long. Send me your suggestions and feedback through the comment box. In the next video, we will see the remaining part. Till then, bye.